Welcome back. So, picked this thing up earlier this winter, middle of a snowstorm off the side of the road, brought it home. It's just been wasting this massive amount of space in my living room ever since. So I'm thinking, let's tear this down. I'll show you some cool stuff that we can build from the components that are in it. So when we come around the back, your suspicions that this is a projection TV should be confirmed. As you can see, we have three projection units. These are CRT projectors, as you can see from the base here. And of course, the high voltage uh, flyback transformer there. And the way these work are really cool. These are red, green, and blue projectors, which all converge. That's why they're at a weird angle. They all converge into one spot at a mirror on the back. And then the image on that mirror gets sent through these Fresnel lenses at the front. And I'm sure you've seen the Backyard Scientist and a hundred other YouTubers make stuff with those Fresnel lenses. You can burn wood, boil water, do all kinds of cool stuff. But that's not what we're here for today. And as you can see, this is a pretty big board. There is a boatload of cool components, all kinds of stuff we could make. But if you come over here, you'll see it says audio amp and there's a big honking heat sink right there. So let's get this thing out. There we go. So now that I believe everything's unplugged, I'm just gonna blast it with some air real quick to get the dust out of here. All right, so we got the board out and clean. Now down here in the corner is where the audio amplifier was. So the first thing we wanna do is come down here to the audio amplifier and we wanna try and get the number off of it. This one is an AN5277. So then we're gonna go right online, search for AN5277 and look for the all data sheet result. There's other websites, I just prefer all data sheet. Once that pops up, go ahead and bring up the PDF. And then once you've opened up PDF view, you can just click download or print right here. You don't have to worry about if you're looking at some malicious ad or something, just click on it right in the PDF viewer. You're all good. And now that we have the data sheet, we can in fact see that it is an audio amplifier and it's common applications of TV. So I think we're looking at the right thing. Get some characteristics and what the pins are used for. Voltage, different ratings, maximum amperage, outputs, temperature ranges, all that good stuff. Here's some equivalencies to the circuitry that's inside the IC so you can tell what's actually going on in there if you wanted. Now here's what we're looking for. This shows each pin 1 through 12 and it shows exactly how to wire up the circuit outside of each pin. Now as you can read this is an example circuit so this is like the base way to hook this thing up. So that's what we're gonna do, keep it nice and simple. So what we're gonna do is get a piece of paper and draw the IC like this with all the pins because this is more representative of what the IC looks like in real life. And then off of those pins, we'll draw each one of these little circuits. And here it is. This is more representative of the pins than this diagram. This will make it much easier for us to wire this thing up. So not only does this show us the basic circuitry to get this thing working, but it shows us the values of each component we want, which makes things incredibly easy for us. So now that we have a good representation of this chip and all the components and their values, we can go ahead and rip the thing out of there. So first you can see this circuit board is made out of three different sections. So I'm gonna disconnect this section to make it easier for us. Alright, so now that we've got those separated, we can work on getting this out. I recommend using a good desoldering pump, especially rather than nothing and just trying to heat up the joints and rip the thing out by hand. That's That never really works good. You can get cheap ones like this that are like six bucks. So if you get one like this, I highly recommend that you smear some silicone grease on the o-ring when you first get it. That'll help increase the suction power. But these nice all aluminum ones are around 20 bucks. The extra 14, 15 dollars is definitely worth it, I think. So I think first I'm gonna desolder all these capacitors and resistors and maybe even this uh, power regulator just to clear the way and make it easy for us. So once you get all the solder off, you can start bending these leads back. Now you want to be careful with these components, you don't just want to grab them and rip them off. You want something, a pair of pliers with a flat edge so you can squeeze the leads in. Then just give it a little twist and bop, out it comes. If you just grab it, start shaking it side to side and ripping on it. If it's especially capacitors, you'll damage the capacitors. And if you find one that just doesn't want to come off, even with the pliers, grab your soldering iron and give it another poke, you have that one leg. It'll come right out. And so now that we got all the components immediately surrounding the amplifier, we can now start desoldering the pins of the amplifier itself. Ah. 
All right, now that we've got all those pins desoldered, just give it a gentle tug side to side as you pull it out. Pulling it straight, of course. Just very little side to side movement. And there you go. One stereo amplifier with heat sink included. So in the interest of making things easier, I'm gonna curate a list of every capacitor and every resistor that's needed to make this whole circuit. All right, so I finished curating my list. These are all gonna be electrolytic capacitors. Uh, even though I drew these as non-polarized, so we'll need seven electrolytic capacitors in these values, and we'll need three resistors in these values. So let's look for these components that we need and then we can start laying out the circuit. So we're gonna go to the board for that. Well, after searching all three of those boards, I couldn't find any of the resistor values that I needed. I couldn't even find anything that would have added up to the resistor values I needed. So I ended up having to break into my own personal stash. I took a 1.5K and a 6.8K, so when I put them in series, they'll add up to 8.3, which is only 100 ohms off, so that's fine for me. Then I took a couple 10Ks, which is exactly what we need to pull down the inputs. So now that we've got all the components we need, we gotta think about what are we going to mount this to? What's the circuit going to be laid out on? And you know, as much as I would love to just grind out some tracks in this copper clad board, I just really don't have the time for it. So we're going to use this pre-drilled prototyping board. Now at this point, if you wanted to be very precise and eliminate any chances for mistakes, you could draw out all these holes or get some dotted grid paper and then draw exactly how you're going to link all these components together on this board. But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to drill a couple holes for the heat sink to drop into, solder this in, and then we're just going to eyeball the rest of it. So we want the components to all go through on this side so that the pins can be soldered onto these pads on the other side. So let's just give it a quick little test fit. We can see all those pins fit in good. The spacing is proper. Now on this side, I'm probably going to have to cut out a notch. And on this side, I'll be able to drill a hole for that pin. Let's get to it. All right, so there's our slot in our drill hole. Now let's double check that they're in the right place and are the right size. Oh yeah, pretty good to me. All right, so now that that's all mounted and cleaned up, we can go ahead and start putting components on. Alright, so now all the components are mounted and it's time for me to put in jumpers between the pins of the IC and the necessary components. Alright, so now I've got all my leads soldered in and I've jumped all the pins that need to be hooked together. All that's left is I need to wire in an auxiliary port so I can plug my phone into the input. And finally, here it is all wired up. As a temporary thing, I've just put a couple pieces of copper down here as turrets to mount the speaker wire to. And I'm using an alligator clamp to bond both of the grounds together. I have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack uh, female at the other end of this wire so I can plug my cell phone into it. Everything on the back side is bonded properly. And now it's time to start testing. So the first test is just turn it on and see if it works. And you'll notice it's extremely quiet. So I started checking all my solder joints and every connection I could think of. And then I realized I made a really silly mistake here. I completely forgot to add a jumper bonding the output ground to the input ground. And that would explain why it was so quiet and distorted because all we were hearing was the little bit of signal that was able to leak through these capacitors. So now just to prove that what I think is wrong is actually wrong, I'm gonna clip this lead to the ground on the input side and to the ground on the output side. Now let's try it out. Well, it seems to be running pretty happy at 14 volts. I mean, it's drawing around half a watt. So then we'll take a quick temperature reading off the front of the IC and you can find that it is well within range. But when I listen in closely, this speaker is getting more power than this speaker. And here's the proof. Red is the right speaker, green is the left speaker. All right, folks, well, we've arrived here at the end of the video. I hope you learned something new and I hope the next time you see a TV sitting on the side of the road, you realize that there's a lot more potential there than just a bunch of trash destined for a landfill. Now, if you're interested in seeing how I diagnose and fix this issue, I'm gonna be making a part two along with some more videos from the other components we didn't use for this project. So maybe give it a flick twist bop. 
We'll see you next time. Oh, that works too. Let's just grab this. Boop, boop, boop.